by the air count. Fred, you're looking prosperous. How oh, about handsome? Uh, prosperous. You know, your trouble is you've got no taste. You know, you could be right. <laughs> hey, look who's over there, Lily Marlene. Lily Marlene was German, not French. That bird's French, all right. No danger. You wouldn't know French from an Eskimo. I'll she's bet Irish. I'll bet you a dollar she's French. You're on. She's Irish. Hasta la vista, senores. Hasta mañana. What did I tell you? French. Irish. What was all that about? Oh, them two nannies across there. I'm sure they're not full shilling. I didn't know you spoke Spanish. Oh, I can't. I've only been watching a lot of cowboy pictures. <laughs> no, it's no older now once she gets going. I've noticed. Hey, I like you, but no. Do you think it does help for me? Mm, definitely. Ta da. I'm only repeating what she said, Eva. Molly Abbott should have more sense. I think she has a point, though. So you expect God to help everybody who asks him for it, is oh, that it? not everybody. Not people who want to win football pools, But you've said a few crafty prayers when you've put more than you should on a bony nag. Only as an added precaution, not meant to be taken seriously. Well, how's he supposed to tell when you're serious or not? Well, I think he should know the difference between a request like that and one that starts, please, God, help me. And you think you ought to get a response from that? Well, Molly Abbott does. Do you? Yes, I do. Maybe you're right. By heck, we are being deep this morning, aren't we? Oh, well, it's better than talking about the cost of things. Yes, it's less depressing, I'll grant you that. I know why he doesn't listen as often as he might. Oh? I think he's confused by all the new sins in the world. But they're not new, love. No, but they're new to me, Ina. Good morning, ladies. Come to join oh. our theology class, have you? Oh, isn't religion something you never discuss with friends if you want them to remain friends, that is? We're not bigots, if that's what you're trying to insinuate. Well, I wasn't for one moment suggesting you were, Mrs Sharp. I wasn't just Well, observing. don't make daft statements. What do you want? Actually, to congratulate you on your appointment as Major Domo of the Community Centre. Quite a friendly mission or so, I thought. Don't you mean caretaker? Yes, if you like. Well, why not say caretaker? Caretaker, then. Oh, I know a much more suitable title, Ina. What? Clerk of Works. I thought that were funny. But, uh, this magazine is going on <clears throat> about Prime Minister Harold Wilson. It's over two years old. We've had a new gaffer since then, haven't we? Do you know, I do believe we had it. It's hard to tell. Do you know, I wouldn't mind being Prime Minister of this country, number one. Well, they do say the qualifications aren't as high, so it's not impossible. Well, I'd stop all them little lads tricks in Parliament for a start off, like all them all-night capers, throwing childish insults at one another and opposing someone just because the other side's proposed it. It's called democracy, Raymond. Yes, I know, and it's being abused. What we could do with as a dictator. You. Why not? You know, I lay odds that somebody once had this conversation with Hitler. <laughs> Next, please. Go on, I've not quite decided how I want mine done yet. Well, it's long enough to perm. I'm thinking of having it cut in steps. Oh. Morning, Councillor Fairclough. As per Ralph, please. Right. I see they've done nothing about our road yet. The Council's got it in hand. <laughs> you were saying that at Christmas. You know, there's potholes there you could sail a dinghy in. Ralph. Yeah, let's talk about the weather or summer, or even cricket. Mm, changing the subject's not going to get the road done, though, is it? You know, I agree with Ray there. A dictator's not a bad idea. At least he gets things done. Wouldn't have to have an industrial relations bill, either. You know the first thing that dictators do, don't you, Ralph? Well, what's that, then? They shoot talkative barbers. Now, <laughs> get on with it, please. Aren't you talking to me, neither? Hello, Harold. Uh, you look different under a towel. I thought you was cold soldiering me like the rest of the people in your neck of the woods. It's got nothing to do with me. What's got nothing to do with you? Ah, uh, now, don't come the innocent. You're not that, you know that. You've made too much brass for a start. Listen, lad, I tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. I go into the rovers for a quart, look after yourself, drink, and get chucked out by the landlady's son. I never said a word to him. You know what the score is, Adel, me old son. I tell you, I don't... Well, I've just never seen a French bird with red hair, that's all. How many French birds have you seen? A lot. You told me two. Go on, one even. Well, it were in London. 
Everything different that's happened to you has happened in London. But things do happen to you in London. Everybody knows that. Yeah, but not on a flaming day trip. Uh, excuse me, I uh, I couldn't help overhearing. I mean, who could really? Uh, this red-headed French bird you're on about. She wouldn't happen to work in a shop on the corner of Coronation Street and Viaduct Street, would she? You see, I said you were French. Are you sure she's French, mate? Oh, I'm sure. My you, I wouldn't like you to ask me how I'm sure. Embarrassing, you know. You know her well, do you? We're like that. She's a redhead. Well, sort of burnish like, yeah. Fit. As a boxer's biceps. Well, I can't understand it. When I went in there, she talked Irish. Irish? Belfast. Oh, yeah, yeah. What? Well, that's her mate. Hey? Well, like colleague, you know. Well, they must be a lot alike, then. Oh, they are. You can hardly tell them apart. So, uh, how do you say in your beautiful England that it is uh, love that would make the world go round? So, if you can get it, Avi, lie back, enjoy it for nothing, eh? Well, Ernest, would you think she was French? She's talking to you. Oh, yes, yes, I would, yes. Remarkable. <laughs> Quite remarkable. <laughs> oh, I think I better stop it if it has that effect on the money system, somebody will be attacking me. Thought that were what you were after. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, if anybody wants me, I'll be in my boudoir. Oh, not your hacienda. Was that you talking, Bernadette, or is it the gossams at their play? Has <laughs> she gone cuckoo? Oh, I sometimes wonder. Uh, could I borrow your gazette? I hear Billy Ingram's death scene and I'd like to see it. He was a very close friend of Alfred before he flicked to Pendlebury. Oh, hang on. I'll see if I've still got it. Thank you. I thought you might have come in here. Oh, Hetty Thor. Bye, heck, we don't see you for years and years, and then suddenly we're in one another's pockets. I oh. wanted a word. What about? Well, you know how you told me about that, Mrs. Alliwall, getting community centre oh, she job. Hasn't, has she? hasn't she? Is that what you're coming to tell me? No, as a matter oh, well, of fact. I'm I very glad I bumped into you. You don't know what's happened. Alf Roberts and Ernie Bishop came round and offered me the job. Said her as was offered it to it had to nurse a sick relative. It's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it, when I told you to say that if they offered the job to you? And you refused it, of course. No, well, I couldn't think of an excuse quick enough. It were... Well, I couldn't very well say that I was nursing a sick relative as well, now could I? There we are, Mrs Sharples. One Weatherfield Gazette. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Anything wrong, Mrs Thorpe? I don't know. Well, I think a buttonhole sets a man off, Mr. Roberts. Exactly. Gives him style. Yeah. Something very lacking in this day and age. Oh, thank you, ladies. The missus gave it to me. Said it was a gesture to the merry month of May. <laughs> Mind you, I felt a bit, you know, conspicuous at first. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm in then, Stanley. Right. Hey, Elf, you got something on your lapel. Here we go. Oh, really, Len? You know what that is, don't you? Is it muck? Oh, those flaming <laughs> pigeons. Oh, it's a buttonhole. <laughs> Get away. You mean like Jack Buchanan and Burlington Betty used Aye, to wear? and uh, Liberace too, I shouldn't wonder. Perhaps he's going to a wedding. He must be. I'm not going to no wedding. I'm not going on no stage. Now, you had your fun, so wrap up. <laughs> well said. Yes, and if you don't, just will stick your heads both in the sea and part a bit of <laughs> Alf. Yeah. I don't mind the buttonhole. It's that flower behind your ear that worries me. <laughs> Tea, flaming heat. <laughs> Sammy Ridgway telling George in the market this morning. Well, Sammy knows what it's all about, doesn't he? He does most of the time, yes. Annie. Harold, I do think you're inviting trouble coming here after what happened the other night. Wasn't his idea, Mrs Walker. It was mine. Oh, indeed. And who might you be? This is my son, Annie. Here. Your son? John Dewhurst, Mrs Walker. And I'd like to know why your son threw my father out of here Monday. Not to mention the... Look, shall we go into the private quarters, the living quarters? We can talk privately there, and Billy is there now, having his lunch. Well, lead on, Mrs Walker. I'm dying to meet him. This way, please. And what was all that about, then? I don't know, I couldn't hear. The lab was at thumping stations, wasn't he? We could do with your elder here, couldn't we, Stanley? Hey? You know, to go and listen at the door. I'll go, if you like. No, leave it to me. I'm a bit lighter on my pins than you. And this, Billy, is John Dewhurst, Harold's son. Oh, aye. Come to stick up for his dad, is he? Billy! <coughs> Something like that, yeah. And well, then, John, I don't want anyone to stick up for me. Well, then, what's he doing here? Up to that, what are you doing here? I thought I made it quite plain that you weren't welcome here. You know, we uh, might be able to hear you a bit better if you didn't have your gob full. Are you talking to me, mate? Oh, Billy, stop it! Now then, John. All I want's an explanation. 
I've done nothing to warrant being chucked out. No, you acted very hastily. I'd say you acted like a madman. You've got to be joking, Mum. I mean it. I'm still waiting for that explanation. Me too. All right, I'll give you one. Because I think maybe you don't know all the facts. Him, your old man, asked my mother to go with him on a cruise, right? He not only asked her, he pleads with her to go. He even asked me to persuade her to go. But no sooner is he out on the briny than he ditches her. But that's not true. Well, if you only let finish, me... Now, I can understand him doing that. All right, he's got other fish to fry anyways a long way from home. But when he bounces in here, flaunting another bird on his arm, I take exception and I kick them both out, all right? You didn't know the other, uh, bird, then? Oh, I hardly looked at it. She just seemed a bit hard to me, that's all. Well, that bird, mate, was his daughter-in-law. My wife! They're, they're talking in what you might call hushed tones. Well, they can't be letting much blood, then. It's a disappointment, isn't it? Yeah. Marvellous. We're all stood here look, licking our chops at the thought of a punch-up going on in there. Talk about enjoying other folks' troubles. Well, you can't enjoy your own troubles, oh. can you? Hey, do you know, I've been thinking, you know, that flower, it makes your face look yellow. I thought it was sickening for some of wrap <laughs> Oh, <laughs> charming. Oh, Betty, oh. I've got to shout loud with you listening in at the door there. You know, I said, with you listening in at the living room door. Oh, shut up. Well, tell Mrs. Walker she can pay me for her order, please. No, I was thinking if you wore a flower of another colour, say, uh, Summit Pews. Thank mm. you. Oh, Raymond, what a pity. I'm just leaving. And we could have had what you promised me, a uh, black on tongue, and we could drink from the same glass, the same side, eh? Maybe tonight, eh? Come on, Londres. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the French one. She's fantastic. The Volta. Get away. Melt all your loose change, mate, that's all. They're still very quiet. Maybe they've done each other in. Has been known, hasn't it? What's going on? Well, there we are then. Misunderstanding, an explanation, and now a celebration. I don't feel like a drink. Now then, John, if I can let bygones be bygones, so can you. It was my missus he insulted. Look, I've said I was sorry, mate. I just assumed it. You know. I haven't forgotten what you called her. Hard, you said. Well, I hardly even looked at it. I certainly wouldn't recognise you if I saw her in the street. I was just that blazing mad, and that's the honest truth. John, I may call you John, mayn't I? For my sake, let's be friends. And if you can resist them sort of blandishness, mate, you're made of stone. Look, John, I never brought you out to bear no grudges. All right, you lost your rag. It could happen to anybody. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Good health. Mm. Your best bottle, Mum. Well, it's wasted on the customers, wouldn't it? I load most luxuries with the hoi polloi. <laughs> That's why I always keep the best cuts for my family and friends. Yeah, by family, he means himself. <laughs> you don't have to tell me what a trencher man your father is, John. Yeah, talking about grub, I've never had better than we had on that ship. It yeah. was rather splendid. And talking about ship, I'm still in the dark as to what happened between you two. Did you have a row or something? Billy, the subject is closed. Not to them out there, it's not. They'll still manage to bring it up. I think you ought to be going, John. I'm just beginning to enjoy myself, Dad. Yes, so am I. Fancy another? Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I said we've got to be going. We've got that job to do. Job? Thanks for the drink, honey. Glad we got things sorted out. Me too. Still friends? We've never not been. <laughs> John? Oh. I don't know what he's on about. Well, I suppose I'd better humour him. Ta ra. Ta ra, mate. I find that hard to believe, Mum. What? Well, that bit about yours having been friends. I mean, you can't have been all that friendly after he ditched you for another woman. It's a wonder you didn't push him overboard. After you've knifed him, that is. Hasn't it sunk in yet? Don't you realise that Harold Dewhurst is behaving like the perfect gentleman he is, that he's covering up for me? Covering up for you? Why? Because he didn't ditch me, as you put it. I ditched him for another man. There we are, Mrs. Thorpe. Asked for it, paid for it, and left it on the counter. Yeah, well, I had things on my mind. Yeah, you said. Tell me something. Do I look daft? Well, no more than anybody else. Well, I must be. It's the only explanation. Oh, hello, Etty. Yeah, you must have had something to do with it. Must have. Had 
What's to do with what? Well, all I know is they gave me community centre job first, but Ina Sharples warned me off it. And now she's got it. Oh, she never. She did. Gave me a dozen good reasons why I shouldn't take it. Oh, dear. I'll come back later, Mrs. Clegg. <sighs> Are tea ready yet, Irma? Two tea. Yes. Are they in? They? The two girls who work for you. Two girls? Uh, the French girl. And the Irish one. Uh. Well, one of them is. I'll get her. Which one is it? I'm not sure. She's in it too. I don't suppose there could be two birds. No a chance. Oh. <clears throat> How do? Remember me? I, I, I were in yesterday and I, I saw you at Rover's dinner time. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Leave it to me. Are you the same bird I saw in here yesterday? Bird? I do not understand. I am... Uh... A uh, woman, not a uh, Robin Brown breath. What did I tell you? She's French. That's 25p, you or me. Hang on a minute, hang on. Have you an uh, uh, Irish mate? Irish? What is that? I um, oh, was uh, christened on Paris, where my father is a famous um, surgeon for the brain. You know, very rich and very famous. And I come to your country because I was um, exhaustive of the caviar and champagne. Hmm. Yeah, they can give you terrible indigestion. Mm. And my father, he was taking a mattress who was less old than me. It was very embarrassing. Oh, I bet. Mm. Admit you were wrong, Keith. Is there an Irish bird working here? Is there? Irish bird? Um, I think the penny fall. You mean the uh, Irish bird, Claude Rocher? She sings like a nightingale. Oui? Do you sing? Oh, we oui, like an elephant. So there isn't an Irish bird. <laughs> well, I don't know of one. Uh, mm. That bloke Langton were pulling our legs. Come on, mate. 25p. Pay up. Ah, we oui, like you say, Raymond is very fond of the legs, well, no? I can't mm. give you until paid, eh? I could have sworn she were Irish. You know what your trouble is? Mm. What? You've not had enough day trips to London. Hey, give us ten fags, our kid, will you? And put a slice over side for your mam. And she says, are you coming up for your tea because it's hot pot? Your mam? Hot pot? Ah, what's wrong with hot pot? You would have it for your breakfast, wouldn't you, Chuck? Well, uh, it does make a change from the caviar. Or wouldn't you two boys be agreeing with that, no leg? <laughs> You've been having us all. Taking us for a right old chatter. No, you see, uh, it's like this, you know. I've not been too well lately, and uh, I had to go to the doctor. He's not a psychiatrist, but he's very nice, you know, and I've been suffering from this funny complaint, and um, first thing he did like was to get out his telescope, you know. Mm. Of course, it was just like having an official guide of your own. Wherever we went, whatever we saw, he had information. Interesting information, too. He was quite the most travelled man I've ever met and very fascinating. <laughs> it sounds it. And, of course, all the other ladies who were on their own were simply green with envy. Yeah, no, I but... rather enjoyed being able to cap whatever they'd done with a more ex interesting experience of my own. So there are one or two things you haven't told me about this fella. For instance? For instance, what he does for a living. Retire. Love. Yeah, retired from what? From the railways, actually. Well, does he build them, own them, or just ride on them? <laughs> I don't know. He didn't sail them. Obviously, something very big. Yeah, it must have been for you to ditch old money bags Dewars for him. Ah, well, Mr. Chambers may have not been Croesus exactly, but he had other attributes. Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten what a bit of Mediterranean moonlight can do. I meant he was cultured. Yeah, you still made me feel a right, Charlie, letting me think it was Charles Dewar's that yes, let you down. Yes, but you jumped to that conclusion yourself, like all the other people, spurred on by Hilda Ogden, I believe. Yeah, well, it was you being so secretive, it was bound to set people's tongues wagging. I was being secretive in defence of Harold. Yeah, I know that now, but I thought you were nursing a broken heart. Oh, Billy, how beautiful. Yeah, maybe, but I felt a prize knit. Well, I'm forgiven now. Yeah, of course you are. Mind you, it'll cost you a Yorkshire put every Sunday for the next month. And cheap at the price. Where did he come from, this bloke, Chambers? I thought you'd have noticed. Noticed? The postmarks on the envelopes have been corresponding. Mom, you're a bit of a flirt, do you know that? A flirt? At my age. Maggie Clegg says you want to see me. Sit down, Ina. Well, that sounds a bit foreboding. I've got a very serious complaint to make to you. Go on, let's hear it. Well, I don't like being used. 
And who's been using you, as you call it? You have. As God's my judge, I've done nothing of the sort. Unless it's about that free soap coupon of yours that I took in. But you always said that sort of soap brought you out in a rush. I'm not talking about any soap coupons. All right, get it off your chest. You asked me to ask Getty Thorpe round here for tea, didn't you? Yes, I did. And it wasn't for any friendly reason. It was just so as you could put her off taking that community job. Now you want to watch it, me, Nicole. I think they call that slander. Now don't feign innocence either. You put her off that job so that you could have it yourself. And I don't think it was a very nice thing to do. Not to Etty and not to me, who's her friend. Oh, your friends are you all of a sudden? Well, uh, uh, we got on very well together. She's a, a very nice person. Can I have my say now? I don't see that there's anything that you can say for once. Has Hedy Thorpe complained to you? No. She, but she told me the story and I put two and two together. Oh, yes. Well, you've proved my point already. Oh, what do you mean? Well, you can put two and two together, but you're not exactly bursting with savvy, are you? Well, I'd rather be simple than cunning. Did Hetty Thorpe cotton on? Did she heck? She's as thick as a seawall. I don't know why the council offered it to her in the first place. She should be very grateful for me for stepping into her shoes. She wouldn't have lasted a week. Well, that's as maybe. Well, it's definite. Well, then you could have waited. It's not my nature to wait. Well, as I always say, there'd be a lot more accidents if there weren't any traffic lights. Eh? So, you see, you're not as clever as you think you are. Do you think that's all right? A uh, pint and two ciders, please. Yeah. Where is it? Hey? You won't know. Oh. I lost my nerve. Oh, I'm disappointed in you, Alfred. I am in myself. I was never one for drawing attention to myself, though. Ah, well, Cyril's the same. I told him that's why I'd never got beyond sergeant. I wish I'd have had a bit more push, you know, blown me on trumpet more. Uh, I hope here's somebody with an up cheek to charm a rent collector. Hey, Betty, I've, uh, <coughs> I've got a problem. Wait for it. Well, you see, I've come without me brass. Mm. Now, if I go back home, Mario Little won't go to that bottom club, you see. The singer in there looks like Tony Bennett, you know. And you don't want to go? I'll have to take it, really. Well, why not go? Well, I thought my brass would be better on your slate than in the bottom club's till, you see. Well, I tell you, cheap for hundred. I knew you'd see it my way, because I find it. You'd make a good con man, Stanley. He's been one for years. <laughs> oh, dear. What are you saying, Alf? The sooner we have a meeting, the better. I'm with you there. Empty bellies, no good to nobody. I'm simply raring to push the boat out. I thought you just wanted a cider. <laughs> well, push the boat out's an old Navy expression for having a bit of a party. Oh. No, I just meant get things started at the centre. Oh, me too. I can't help, I can't help having the, the, odd, the odd misgiving. Such as? Well, in case it turns out to be a white elephant. You know, I mean, with nobody but the usual few bothering to attend. Now, yeah. Ernest, you really must control this natural pessimism of yours. I keep telling you I've got enough for the two of us. <laughs> Sorry, Emily. It's going to be the busiest, liveliest, trendiest community centre in the history of community centres. That better? Much. Ah, you've got to make sure you get on the committee, you know. How do we do that? Well, you keep telling people how interested you are. Oh, we're doing that already. Ernest. Yes, yes, we are. Well, here's to the community centre. Cheers. Yakida. Oh, she's at it now. <laughs> you, uh, you fancy yourself a bit at this mimic, like, don't you, Spud? Of course I do, right? Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, a pint and a gin and tonic, please, Betty. Right. Come on, I knew there was something in the wind when you offered to buy me a drink. Oh, just, just being friendly, you know. Raymond, what's up? Well, you see, there is this bloke I want to impress for business reasons. So you should be buying him drinks, not me. No, but I thought that if I turn up with a French girlfriend... Me? Why not? I don't know. Don't you think you can carry it off, then? I never said that. Well, then, I can promise you a great night out. It's not a trick. As if. <laughs> right, you're on. Sherry. <laughs> mm. 